Able Then On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Able Then On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yehad, New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Able Den on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Able Den on Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter. Today, and what's the importance of this march? Oh, there's so many important things about it. We are here today to talk about healthcare as a human, right? <laughs> Wait, wait, turn again with All right, start. it's on my back. Okay. Okay, the People Worker Center is rallying for everybody to have free health care, Medicaid as a whole. Instead of all of us paying individually for plans that aren't covering our needs and also going up every year, to all pay for it as a collective, that's how insurance is sort of structured. Mm -hmm. um, instead of doing it as a model, like a government model, right now the little companies are charging us one by one. Or if you can't afford it, instead of your bill being $500, it's $50,000. So we're so hoping- what, In your opinion, quickly, what's, what's the, the biggest problem or what has been some of the biggest problems for people with disabilities or people with special needs in the United States and also globally? Because it's not just local, uh, in like Medicaid, housing, okay. problems like that. Oh, discrimination first starts. I mean, people love to prey on people they feel may be weaker than them or may not understand their rights. Um, also, accessibility to things, uh, saying to people that it's uh, an encumbrance upon them, that they have to wait five minutes for someone to get on a bus or for there to be a lift. Um, people also need access, like a big, ac uh, big, I say hurdle for people with disabilities, is sometimes even getting to appointments and then having social workers that will offer them the assistance to find the resources to get there, because they are out there, but you have to have people willing to sort of disseminate the information and not look at it as some kind of tax on their time. And people need um, you know, vehicles that are accessible for them to use, like say if there's a program, we need to have some vehicles that are handicapped accessible, um, more parking for people to be able to get out and go to a store that they don't have to walk a long distance. Like if you have a handicap accessible vehicle, there should always be like a spot so you can go to shops, so you can go to these other places. And then I think like electric vehicles should start thinking of these issues as well, like whether it be a van, whether it be a smaller vehicle, um, things like that. Like people need to be have more independence. That's just my thought. Mm -hmm. And healthcare is supposed to cover some of these appliances and to have more funds to cover uh, things that can adapt cars or businesses or apartment buildings was another thing where I had known a man who was an amputee and he couldn't find housing because there was no housing that was accessible to him. Like to be able to go up a ramp with his wheelchair, there was no elevators accessible. This was like in Lamoille County. So he was stuck. I think it was in a shelter. U L E N. And what's the reason why you're here today? And same question. 
what, what do you think can be changed with like housing and healthcare? Um, everybody should be able to have healthcare, and that's why we do the march for Medicaid. Council on Aging and Independent Living, and I paid $139 out of my pocket. Mm. That's what I had to pay, and it is good luck. And I'm here to march with the with the right. with my workers. Thank you. Thanks for health care uh, here in Vermont. And uh, I've been thinking. Uh, you know, uh, sort of looking back, to, uh, the Vermont Worker Center has been here for 20 years saying health care is a human right. Ten years ago this morning, a lot of young people woke up in Manhattan in Zuccotti Park and started to Occupy Wall Street. And so I thought on this uh, anniversary of uh, Occupy Wall Street, we really learned the importance of uh, the needs of the 99% being taken care of and that the 1% of the whole lot of the wealth, we need to change this system. And indeed, so it's been a long time cry, but I'm so glad that we're out here today saying that once again, health care is a human right. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to give a message of hope, um, besides health care being a human right, well, I mean, uh, with America being a rich country, uh, what, you know, I mean, there shouldn't be um, uh, Medicare, Medicaid. I mean, you know, there, there shouldn't be food stamps. There shouldn't be poor people. Yep. What's one positive message being affected through a man of the clock? Yep. Well, I know that we can change this. Uh, as those uh, uh, young people found out 10 years ago uh, on Occupy Wall Street, another world is possible. And so what we just have to do is continue to have the hope, the work, the faith, working together in solidarity to change this system. Another world is possible. Why really do you think the system that. needs to be changed? Well, because it's unfair. Some people get uh, the care that they need, but uh, most people don't. For uh, some people, they get great care, but most people, it's not always so good. And so I think we need to make sure that uh, there's a basic fairness, that everybody gets what they need. And that's why the system definitely needs to be changed. Until that's the case, we've got to be out here saying, Health care is a human right. Ain't no way we're backing down. Ain't no way we're backing down. We're rising up, the time is now. Rising up, the time is now. Oh, 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 oh. For profit, health care's got to go. For profit, health care's got to go. Oh, 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 oh. For profit, health care's got to go. Neighbor, neighbor, can't you see? Neighbor, neighbor, can't you see? Healthcare for all is what we need. Healthcare for all is what we need. Neighbor, neighbor, can't you see? Neighbor, neighbor, can't you see? Healthcare for all is what we need. Healthcare for all is what we need. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. For profit, healthcare's got to go. For profit, healthcare's got to go. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Got to go. Health insurance is a lie. Health insurance is a lie. They don't care if people die. They don't care if people die. Health insurance is a lie. Health insurance is a lie. They don't care if people die. They don't care if people die. Oh, 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 oh. Healthcare's got to go. For profit, healthcare's got to go. Oh, 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 oh. These profiteers have got to go. These profiteers have got to go. Healthcare is a human right. Healthcare is a human right. That's why today we stand and fight. That's why today we stand and fight. Healthcare is a human right. Healthcare is a human right. That's why today we stand and fight. That's why today we stand and fight. Oh, oh. To go, profit, health care's got to go. Oh, 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 oh
healthcare's got to go. For profit, 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 healthcare's got to go. And welcome to Barry City Park. Whoa! Come on, you can do better now. Yeah! Repeat after me. We are, we are the nonviolent non Medicaid, Medicaid Army, Army marching, for marching for human rights. today in City Park. It's so good that we're going to march together. It is so good that we know health care is. A human right. Health care is. A human right. Health care is. A human right. All right. All right. We've been talking a lot about history the past week, but 10 years ago this morning in a park Men and women, what young people rose up to realize they had started to occupy Wall Street. Ten years ago this morning in Zuccotti Park, they knew the inequality of our system. They knew that there's a 99% and that's us, and there's a 1% and that's them. They knew that it's time to change the system. For 20 years, the Vermont Workers Center, over 20 years, the Vermont Workers Center has been out here saying, health care is. Right. is. Health care is. Health care is. That's right. And so now we're continuing that fight. But we're looking to the future. We're looking to the time when all our sisters and brothers are taken care of. Not profits, but people that health care is accessible to all, that all are considered safe, well, all have all what they need. That's why we're here today, because health care is. Yeah, so thank you. We're going to march together. We're going to sing together. We're going to do what it takes to change this system. We're going to do what it takes to make sure that there's no profit off of people's illness. We're going to do what it takes to make sure that there's housing for all, that there's no discrimination against our sisters and brothers. We're going to do what it takes to change this system to make it fair for all. So thank you so much. Thanks to each and every one of you for being here today, for all those who've organized this wonderful day. Again, welcome to Barry, Nonviolent Medicaid Army. Welcome to Barry, Vermont Worker Center. Healthcare is. Healthcare is. All right. Thank you, Rev. Earl. All right, one more time, let's hear it for Reverend Earl Cooper Camp. Woo! My name's Tev. I'm a proud member of the Central Vermont Organizing Committee of the Vermont Workers' Center. I'm Matt. I'm a member of the Chittenden OC and the Vermont Workers' Center. Matt, why are we here? Because health care is a human right. right. Can I hear from you guys? What is healthcare? Healthcare is a human right. Healthcare is a human right. So we're here today because healthcare is a human right. And I personally learned that at 18 when I developed a chronic illness and entered the adult world just absolutely destroyed with medical debt. Do our children deserve better? Yes. Do our communities deserve better? Yes. Do our people deserve better? Yes. You know, this march and this rally is one of dozens happening all across the United States this week as part of the Nonviolent Medicaid Army Week of Action. We live in the richest country that has ever existed in human history, but we also have 140 million poor people in this country. Almost half of our population who are poor and dispossessed. 
We have the highest number of COVID deaths in the world, 650,000, approximately the population of Vermont. 18 months into the pandemic, our political leaders have not moved to drastically expand health care, nor to declare that health care and housing are human rights. That's a big boo. And that's why organized and working, organized poor and working class people this week are calling for Medicaid for all in urban and rural places, in California, in Texas, in Alabama, Wyoming, Wisconsin, Indiana, Florida, New York, Pennsylvania, and right here in Barry, Vermont. Yeah. Yeah. Now these groups, our brothers, our sisters, our siblings, are part of building the new Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. Woo! And today, as we march in step, we recognize that it is an intertwined fight against poverty, racism, militarism, ecological devastation, and our nation's distorted moral narrative. Right. Today we come together under the banner of health care, but we know that the same system that denies us our right to health care is the system that denies our right to housing. It is the same system that attacks and scapegoats immigrants that marginalizes our elders and peoples with disabilities, yes. that puts hurdles in all our way. Today, we'll hear stories that make those connections between all these injustices. We'll hear stories that speak truth, that an injury to one is an injury to all. Yes. Are you talking about logistics? Are you talking about logistics? Yeah. Hello, this is Chapin. That's fine, my guy. I'm going to get my youngest son. Well, he's just gone. <laughs> and he's got his truck on the inside. Leanna, this is group.
singing neighbor neighbor can't you see and it'd be kind of like a call to like hey we're getting yeah, going yeah. Um, exactly and then when one of the, the start off mcs Sorry. it's like all right we're gonna start, start marching and the singers are gonna get us going let's start with don't you want to go because i feel like that's perfect yeah. like, hey let's go to that land um, and let's generally kind of clump relatively close um and relatively close to the front like that there'll be we did often have like people who are marching, who are choosing to march, who have mobility impairments to like just lead the way to kind of set the pace. But let's be like not too far behind the front um, to kind of just help things going. I'll have one of these, but I'm happy like, after being a color other person. Is this thing too? I just don't want to get lost. <laughs> oh, come on, Larry, you got this. We should sing, um, Let My People Go. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Avery starting something. In Montpelier, it's called um, Abel's and Arnea, uh, it's on all the media. Yeah. So, that's why I'm here today. Awesome. I apologize. No. Oh. 
that have been we've been planning all week all across the country as a part of the nonviolent Medicaid army week of action ow, ow! Woo! first off we just want to express our immense gratitude and appreciation to Bennett Shapiro and Mad Tech that's providing the sound system for today so you can hear us speak Thank you for helping us amplify our voices and our stories. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, like Molly said, here in Vermont, we've been working all week, be building up to this day. For the whole month, we've been talking with folks uh, uh, in our communities by neighborhood canvassing, tab tabling at events like Burlington Pride Festival. To kick off the week of action on Monday, we had a honking wave Woo! in front of the for-profit urgent care in Brattleboro. Brattleboro, stand up yeah! to call for an end to healthcare profiteering. On Tuesday, we sang and shared our stories in front of the headquarters of Blue Cross Blue Shield to call out health insurance profiteers who make money when they deny us our health care. That's right. Woo! And on Wednesday, we shared food with our neighbors in the Northeast Kingdom at a hot dogs for healthcare meal in St. J's. St. J's, stand up, everybody! Yeah, and I mean, as we've said, the United States is the richest country in the world. It has the biggest wealth gap. We have over 140 million people, which is almost half of the population, who are poor and dispossessed. We have the highest number of COVID deaths in the world. One in 500 people in the United States have died of COVID-19. And 18 months into the pandemic, our political leaders have not moved drastically to expand healthcare, nor declare that healthcare and housing are human rights. And that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> Because of our for-profit healthcare system, over 25% of the population, or over 52 million adults, do not have a primary care doctor. This leads to greater mm -hmm. suffering and death for poor people, especially in the midst of COVID, when many people have fallen prey to false information, increasing their chances of infection and lifelong consequences or death. Yeah, exactly. That's why organized forum working class people this week have held dozens of actions to call for Medicaid for all in urban and rural places in California, Texas, Alabama, Wyoming, Wisconsin, Indiana, Florida, New York, Pennsylvania, and right here in Vermont. And the pandemic has made crystal clear that an injury to one and is an injury to all. It is not just a nice sounding slogan. So long as the poor and dispossessed, dispossessed around the world are unable to access vaccines and other life-saving health care, we are all affected. In the face of this stark reality, Big Pharma is prioritizing its bottom line over human lives. We stand in solidarity with the poor and dispossessed across the world who are calling on Big Pharma to waive the patents on life-saving vaccines and who call on wealthy countries and call on wealthy countries to stop the immoral hoarding of life-saving medicine and supplies while poorer countries face acute shortages. That's right, that's why we're here. Yeah. Healthcare is. A human right. Healthcare is. A human right. Healthcare is. A human right. So I didn't introduce myself earlier. My name is Molly, she, her. I'm part of the Central Vermont Organizing Committee here. I'm Volney, he, they, Central Vermont as well. Yeah. And uh, just a few logistics here. Thank you, everybody, for coming. City Hall Park is beautiful, isn't it? This is Barrie, Vermont. We're very happy to be here in Barrie. Yeah. 
Very Vermont. If you need bathrooms, bathrooms are over there at the Gray Church. You can go in there, they're up the stairs. In the back, they're in the back. So bathrooms are over there at the Gray Church. Um, I see everybody wearing masks and I just wanna thank you so much for wearing masks today. I know that we're all really tired of wearing masks and also we really appreciate it because COVID is spiking in Vermont again and we're all taking measures to stay safe and you know, medically vulnerable people have come out here today to support the march and we just wanna make sure that we have a safe march for everybody. So thank you so much for wearing masks. I really appreciate you. Uh, a few other things, if you haven't signed in yet, there's a registration table right here. There's another one right over there. So you can make your way there and sign in. We've got a wellness table over here uh, towards the statue. There are clementines and kind bars and bottles of water. And if you do happen to need first aid at any point during today, we got Band-Aids, got Benadryl and other things over there. So go talk to the wellness and first aid tent if you need anything. There is gonna be food. There are some snacks right over here. Merch. Yes, yeah, and merch. Julie's right here with our merch. Give it up for merch. We got t-shirts and stickers and pins. If you wanna go get a lovely red Vermont Worker Center t-shirt, you can go over here and talk to Julie. I'm sure she'd be really happy to talk to you. Um, okay, those are my announcements. Back to you, Volner. Thanks, Molly. Here in Vermont, as, uh, as at a national level, in the face of an unprecedented uh, public health and economic crisis, our public officials have refused to implement universal health care, which was passed into law 10 years ago at this point under Act 48. Instead, they have propped up health care profiteers like UVM Medical Center, One Care, and insurance companies, and have offered Band-Aid solutions. Yeah, I know, boo and have offered Band-Aid solutions that don't address the depth or root cause of the crisis. Is that right? Does that sound right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Patients and rank and file healthcare workers suffer as a result, and both groups are cut out from meaningful, from any meaningful decision-making about our healthcare system. Is that right? No. no. Instead of listening to, uh, to the growing number of us struggling to access health care and rank and file uh, workers struggling to provide care, public officials at the top defer to taking uh, direction from high paid health care executives who have their bottom line in mind instead of what's best for the rest of us. Disgusting. Ow. In February, we held vigils at for-profit nursing homes across the state, where low pay, unsafe staffing ratios, and unsafe conditions imposed by corporate owners and managers have long meant inadequate care for patients and unsafe conditions for healthcare workers. We stood in solidarity with workers and patients. One of the longtime members of the Worker Center family, Natalie Sinkiu, has been fighting for her rights at Queen City Healthcare and Rehab. And she says she's here with us in spirit. We stand in solidarity with you, Natalie. Yeah. Yeah. So earlier this summer, the Vermont Workers Center was one of 17 organizations that submitted a letter to the new task force on affordable, accessible health care, calling on them to prioritize the human right to health care. So surprise, surprise. We have not heard back from them. <laughs> and from one, the one meeting that they've held so far, it appears that they're looking at the usual Band-Aid recommendations rather than the systemic solutions that we know that we need. We need systemic solutions, right? Yeah. We need healthcare for all, right? Yeah. It's time to stop treating healthcare like a commodity to be bought and sold and time to treat it like a public good. Yeah. That's the truth. But instead, we find ourselves in a situation where UVMC, MMC, is asking the Green Mountain Care Board 
for a $204 million budget increase and permission to build a lucrative outpatient, outpatient surgery center while sitting on a $102 million surplus and while patients wait weeks or, or months for appointments and frontline healthcare workers are worked to the bone amidst unprecedented staffing short shortages. We stand with unionized nurses and hospital technicians at UVMMC who have been calling for safe staffing for years. This is of concern to all of us in Vermont because UVMMC is trying to create a monopoly that ties the hands of doctors and threatens the survival of local practices, small community hospitals, and less profitable, uh, profitable areas of healthcare. In fact, this same week, that the same week that the Green Mountain Care Board rubber stamped UVMMC's budget request, granting an additional 200 million in patient revenue, they're denying the budget requests of Springfield Hospital. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> their rationale is that their budget is too ambitious because they don't have a huge cash reserve like UVMMC. Springfield Hospital, uh, serves a community that's pretty similar to us here in Barrie, a deindustrialized town that was once the center of tool and dye making in Vermont. Healthcare shouldn't be just be just available where it's profitable. Struggling communities shouldn't be punished by stripping away our healthcare infrastructure simply because we're poor. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, in a little bit. Uh, up next, we're going to hear from about 12 people from around Vermont about the particular ways that they're affected and why they support healthcare for all. So we're going to have some storytelling and hear from each other. Before that, Liz and Tev and the Solidarity Singers are going to come up and lead us in a song to help us frame our fight for healthcare. Yeah. Let's let's hear it for Tev and Liz and the Solidarity Singers.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're either on the side of the people or you're working for One Care. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right, so up first, we're going to hear a story from Liana. Right up here. Let's give Liana a hand. Hi, my name is Liana Gayette. I live in Montpelier, Vermont. I'm here to tell you about my healthcare story about the lack of transportation. I think we need more transportation, especially from the hospital, because a lot of us rely on transportation to get to and from appointments. There used to be a bus route that went up to Hospital Hill, but now instead we have an app called My Ride. So I have to schedule trips in advance, and you need to have a phone to be able to, do, to use it. The bus route also took me to stores by the hospital that I need to go to. Walmart, the big stores, aren't in Montpelier. They are up by the hospital. I want to see it go back to being a bus route every hour. There is no good transportation from the hospital when I've gone up there for an urgent need. I can call an ambulance if I need to go there, but I don't have a way home. The police used to do courtesy rides, but they don't do it anymore. One time, I had to come home from the ER and I called a friend who was luckily awake at 1 a.m. Other times, other time I called someone who I knew from home help and he literally came from his house to get me a ride home. And I'm thankful there's nice people out there and it can be hard to find someone who's available. Some people need to rely on ambulance to come back home. One time I overheard some overheard a conversation where someone needed a ride home and they wouldn't do it because the person was on Medicaid. Now I refuse to go up to the hospital at night because I know it will be hard to find a way home. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Liana. So many of these stories that you're about to hear today will directly address the healthcare crisis and we know that our lives don't fit into neat little boxes, so it's really important to hear how it affects our lives specifically. So, our next speaker yes, Julie. is Julie. Hey. Welcome, Julie. Julie Hi, my name is Julie, and I am one of the co-coordinators of the Northeast Kingdom chapter of the Vermont Workers Center, and I live in St. Johnsbury. I'm a proud disabled woman. I was organized into the Workers Center at Disability Awareness Day in 2018. Under the current system, people receiving Social Security disability are covered by Medicaid for two years. Medicaid pays for wheelchairs, walkers, canes, shower chairs, and other devices. It pays for physical therapy and occupational therapy as well. However, two, however after two years, you're forced onto Medicare and required to pay for Part B without any increase in your monthly income. Their rationale is you can apply for Medicaid to pay the premium for Medicare Part B. So we are screwed if we make too much money. Does this system make sense? No. Should we be penalized because we have a disability? No. This forces people like me to beg providers for financial assistance. It's a degrading process of submitting tax returns and proof of income. If you go to Dartmouth, they call it charity. We can't get devices unless we pay for them. Is this a fair and logical system? No. Should we have to beg for health care? No. Does Vermont need to fund universal health care under Act 48 so that disabled Vermonters have access to the health care and devices they need to, like, to lead a dignified life? Yes. I fight to walk. I shouldn't have to fight for my health care. Thank you. Hi, 
Hey everyone, how you doing? Yeah. All right, uh, my name is Isabel Luna, I'm an organizer with Migrant Justice, and I'm gonna read a speech uh, written by Isai Miranda, who's a member of Migrant Justice but couldn't join us today. Uh, so, uh, the speech goes. Uh, my name is Isai Miranda, I'm a dairy farm worker here in the state of Vermont. I, I work between 12 to 14 hours a day, and I work in the night shift. Sometimes barely having enough time to eat, barely having enough time to sleep or to rest. And I have been doing this for several years. In recent years, I have developed or that being diagnosed with severe gastritis, and I'm in constant pain when I eat or when I try to, uh, to rest. And I have developed this condition because of the long hours that I work where I barely have enough time to eat a proper meal. Sometimes you have to eat in the milking barn because if you take a lunch break, that means that you're gonna be working up to 14 hours a day. I have hesitated to see the doctor since I was diagnosed with gastritis because a visit to the doctor means that I will have to spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars out of my own pocket. I, have, I barely make enough money to get by and the little money that I earn, I send back to my family. So I'm in this position uh, that because of the lack of money, I have to choose between my family and my health care. And my family comes first. Because they also have a lot of medical needs and medical conditions, and I am the one who supports them. This situation doesn't just apply to me. I speak for the rest of my community. Many workers in dairy farms are facing the same situation, where if you're sick, you rather just drink a pill and hope that you feel uh, better the next day but going to the doctor is not an option. So this is why we're standing together in solidarity with the Vermont Workers Center and everyone out here today, because we're all in the same boat. We're, uh, we're, all, we're all poor, we all have to work to put food on our tables, and we are uh, all barely getting by. And regardless of who you are, regardless of your status, everyone should have the right to access to healthcare. Affordable healthcare, and access to Medicaid. Uh, si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Hi everyone, my name is Christine from Brattleboro. Um, I work in the uh, hunger, uh, food insecurity sector, and fight constantly um, in, a, in a charitable industry that tries to decouple hunger from poverty. But really, I'm just trying to help people in desperation because people are facing poverty. I work with people who do not have primary care doctors um, and get all of their care from the emergency room. Um, and people who will try so hard to go 100 miles away because they face so much stigma in our local hospital just because they're poor. As for myself, I am very lucky in that I have health insurance and I have, um, which is high deductible, but I have an HSA. However, after a year of, finding, of trying to find a therapist, the one therapist that I could find is out of network, so I have to use my entire HSA um, for therapy and having to choose between my chronic health, my chronic pain, which my doctors don't uh, understand, but which nonetheless is very expensive, and paying for that, or to pay for my mental health. I choose my mental health, and so there's a, a sign here where I put all of my bills um, on there, <laughs> and I don't pay them. Um, this is why we need universal health care. We come together, we shall come together. Now that's right. How shall we heal the suffering? We shall heal the suffering singing. When shall we heal the suffering? We shall heal the suffering now. How shall Fight injustice, we shall fight injustice, singing when shall we fight injustice? Hey.
Able Then On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Able Then On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Able Dinner on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England, Chapter.